Hope Church Lavington presents Recharged Life Sermons from One Heart to Another. This week, Limitations by Pastor Brian King Bogwa. There are some limitations in your life that will never leave you. But there are some that you can overcome. And I believe God today through His divine wisdom will walk with you and show you those that you need to overcome and those that you need to break through. So let's delve into the Word of God today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 7 to 9. Why was Paul writing this verse? Why was Paul removing such heavy words from his spirit saying that we can be pressed down, hard pressed from every side? but not crushed. Why was he in that mood? Let me tell you why. Paul was writing this letter to the Corinthian church for the second time. The first time Paul came and planted a powerful young church like Hope Church in the city of Corinth. But after he left, there are prophets who are false that came into that city. And they started preaching a false gospel. They started teaching the people of Corinth a gospel that they did not know of. That was funny, full of heresy. And then rumors started spreading against Paul. They said that Paul was now eating the money that was donated for the poor civilians of Corinth. You remember after the church of Acts, people used to bring everything into the house of God. That's why, in fact, I was sharing this with my brother. And we just talked about this and we said, if we all learned to share, we would not have poor people suffering in the church. So there was that arrangement in those days, that people would raise money, bring money into the church kitty, and then they would distribute it to the people who are in need. But what happened? After Paul had left, rumors started flying around that Paul was pocketing the money that was donated for the people. Here is Paul, a mighty man of God. Here is Paul who has a vision. Here is Paul who has a mission. He wants to see the Corinthian church established. He wants to see the Corinthian church growing. He is like all of us. We want to see something happening. But then he, he starts hearing rumors of people spreading negative vibe about him. Some people are even questioning the authority of Paul. They are starting to say, Paul is not an apostle after all. You know how it feels when people question your credibility. How many here have, been, have heard people spread rumors about them that are not true? How many of you have been looked down upon? How many of you have had people against you that want to bring you down? I'm talking about the haters in your life. Now, when I talk about limitations, Paul knew very well what we are talking about. Now, why does he talk about this? And I want you to understand that Paul, Paul demonstrated all the four things that I've shared with you today. Number one, Paul exuded a lot of encouragement. That even after hearing bad reports about himself, he did not go into his office and say, Wakorinto, idea. Who do they think they are? They are questioning my authority. I am the bishop. I will make sure the church fails and goes down. But you see, Paul did not react like many of us to the limitations that we face. Paul was a man of courage. And that is why in the book of 2 Corinthians from chapter 1, Paul tries to show the Corinthian church that you think what you're doing to me is brand new to me. Let me tell you, I've been there, I've done that, I've fought the fight, I've been to the prison, so this is not anything to me. I've bought the t-shirt, I have the DVD, I'm strong. God has taken me through so much for me to be brought down by your accusations. Many of us, when we face limitations, the first thing that comes to us is discouragement. We want to close shop, we want to stop everything, and we want people to acknowledge what we've done, and blah, blah, blah. But Paul said what? In fact, I will not show you how good I am. I will show you how weak I am. That's why he goes to say, for I am like a vessel made of clay. 
but there is a treasure that is inside of me. You can break me and I will break, but you cannot take away the treasure that is inside of me. Am I talking to somebody who is being hard pressed by situations, by limitations in your life? I came to tell you that if you have the treasure of God, the kingdom of God inside of you, nothing can crush you. Let's move on. And he continues to say, to show that this power that I have is not from myself. It's not from us, but from God. That's why, you see, many leaders when they are confronted, they try to show how good they are. But Paul was not in the business of affirming himself. In fact, he told the people, this is how weak I am. I'm just a man. I'm just a man. Like Kanji's song goes. He's just but a man. When you say somebody is a fool, and instead of questioning you, they tell you, yes, it's true, I'm a fool. You stop dissing them. The argument ends there. Because Paul is acknowledging that he is a human being. But let's go on. He's trying to show the Corinthian church that I will not be discouraged. Number two, he changed his perspective. The, you know, these people in the Corinthian church used to see Paul as an untouchable. They used to see Paul as a pope who would never sin. This is what Paul is saying. Weakness is not wrong because God is, is become stronger in your weakness. Number three, he exuded a lot of reality. He did not start sobbing and saying, Oh, they are persecuting me. The man of God. After I've come from all this, this is my second journey here. Look at what they are doing to me. He did not cry. Because he understood. If Jesus was persecuted, if people said stuff about Jesus, that means they will also say stuff about you. So, I want you to give someone a high five in this service and tell them, Accept reality. Accept reality. This, in fact, I was being shown a, 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 a clip on YouTube by my friend uh, Fred. T.T. Jakes was speaking about realities in our lives. Some things, you don't start speaking in tongues at you people are hating you. You will be hated on. Kwenny, who do you think you are? There is always somebody smarter than you. There is always somebody richer than you. There is always somebody more handsome than you are. There is always somebody more built up than you are. So suck it up and accept it. See at any way we do. Then the last thing he exuded a lot of maturity. Because this is what Paul was saying. The church in Corinth will grow despite your heresies, despite whatever, despite my limitations, I will grow. But let us now start chewing on that word. Why does it say, but we have this treasure in jars of clay? I want you to go to verse 7. Because Paul is saying, but we have this treasure in jars of clay. Now, I did some research, and this is what it says. In the old days, people in their houses, because there were no bank accounts, people used to hide treasure in clay pots. This tradition has continued, especially with the women in the market area. Have you seen women hiding money in their bras? Now, I'm sorry to mention the word bra in a church. But have you seen women hiding money in dirty, filthy handkerchiefs eh? that you cannot even touch? Why? Because you don't want to attract thieves. Simple. That is a security measure. That is why women, when you go to the market and when you, you remove a thousand notes, I want to change, but unawambia, wacha ni kutorea sheji. Hey, hey, mama, hey, hey. Money chops off from funny areas, eh? This tradition of putting treasure in jars of clay started a long time ago. So when Paul is trying to tell them that we have this treasure in jars of clay, he's talking the market language. And this is a powerful truth here, people. Because this is what he's saying. Pots can break easily, okay? But inside them, once they are broken, it reveals the mighty treasures that people have stored inside of them. Now, I want to say a statement here today. That God, by chance, deposits his greatest gifts and treasures in the most weak people in this planet. Why? So that when they emerge out of the blue, so that when they go to the TV and the newspapers and everybody is talking about them, people will not see them 
but they will see God. Don't think you have understood what I'm saying here today. There is something. Now, the treasure that is big, that Paul is talking about, like I said earlier, is the kingdom of God. So this whole vibe is about the kingdom. Last month we were talking about money. What did we say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. God has just hidden a million dollar idea in one of the most foolish people in this service today. God has hidden a concept. God has hidden a hero in one of the most weakest people in our service today. And I'm not here to boast of my strength. Because what Paul is saying is, we cannot keep flaunting our spirituality, but yet deny our humanity. Because when we see the humanity that we have, then we begin to see how far God has brought us. That's why when the worship team was here saying, Come and see you, bewe, ninge kuwa wapi mimi. Come see you, baby. Ninge kuwa wapi mimi. Umeja wa narehema. Narehema tele. Umeja wa narehema. Narehema tele. How many of you know that that is true of you? That if it were not for God. Woo! That if it were not for God, you would not be where you are right now. Because God says, for I use the foolish things of this world to shame the clever, the wise, the digital, the all technologicized people. I use the weak things. Oh, give God a mighty praise. If you know that you have a treasure inside of you. Ah! That is why we should walk around telling people, for I am just but a man, but don't get it twisted. I'm carrying Jesus inside of me. <whistles> Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. You need to know how to rejoice when the word of God comes into your heart. I didn't Jean teach us today that when you receive the word of God, stop looking at me like an intellectual, like you're analyzing what I'm saying, but receive encouragement right now. I want to see you encouraged. Hallelujah! Listen to this. Treasure in jars of clay. And then it continues to say that we may show to the whole world that this power that we have to keep going on despite of our limitations, to make it despite of our limitations, is not of me. That's why I would want to hear that when Alemba goes to the TV station, when he wins next year Gospel Male Artist of the Year, when they ask him, Alemba man, how did you make it? I want to see him raising up his hand saying, Come and see you, baby. Is anybody feeling me here today? You are a vessel of God's praise waiting to happen. Come on! Let's move on, let's move on. Then it says, that we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. How many of you here would have backslidden a while back? How many of you here would have stopped coming to church because of your disappointments? How many of you would have stopped giving, stopped serving, stopped loving people? How many wives in here today would have walked out of their homes if it were not for God? How many people would have quit working for their companies if it were not for God? How many of you have been hard-pressed? Now, how many of you have been hard-pressed on every side? Hey! Let me just give you an example of somebody who's hard pressed on every side. There is a mother who receives a text message from a child. Mama, I've just been chased from school. When she calls the husband, the husband says, oh yeah, I don't know what we're going to do, my sweetheart, because I've just been fired from my job. When she gets home at night, encouraged, and she wants to pray with the husband, she receives another call from the mother telling her that I have just been diagnosed of cancer. And when she goes back to the office in that bus, crying tears, in fact wiping herself, if you people might think that she's sleeping, but she's not sleeping. It's because she's being hard pressed on every side. But yet she knows 
that there is still a, a treasure inside of her that is still causing her to go on. But, but she's not pressed hard enough. When she goes to work, she receives a paper on the table telling her that the company is shutting down. That's what I mean when I say being hard pressed on every side. That you have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, nowhere to go. Even when you come to the church service and you meet a pastor like me and he lays his hands on you, you still go home and you're not sure where the answer will come from. Have you ever been hard pressed? But you know why we will not be crushed? I want you to go to Galatians chapter 5. And I want us to read from verse 22. Let's find out what is this treasure that we have. What is this treasure that we so dearly possess? Hallelujah. Hey, hey, somebody give God a praise. Somebody open up your mouth and, and start calling unto God. Ask Him to release this treasure upon you. This treasure upon you. Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. The fruit of the Spirit is forbearance. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness. The fruit of the Spirit is goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. The fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. And the Bible says, against which there is no law. Can I talk to somebody here today? When you are pressed and have pressed on every side, surrounded by haters who are hating on you, you can still show some love. You can have love when you're surrounded by your haters. That is why the word of the Lord says, for you can be hard pressed on every side, but you will not be crushed. Why won't you be crushed? Because you possess love. Is somebody here receiving that love? I want you to hold on to the love of God that says love God and love your fellow brother. You cannot love me and hate your brother. Loving God is all rounded. I have the love of the Lord today inside of me. Receive the love of the Lord today in Jesus' mighty name. Let it enter your heart and take away all that petty hatred, all those petty grudges that you have because they are weighing you down. If you never knew that hatred, that bitterness is crushing you to the pulp, let it go and receive the love of God. Give God a mighty praise. He loved you even while you were yet a stinking sinner like me. You can have joy and peace when you're supposed to lose your mind. You can have forbearance when you pray and God seems to be quiet. How many of you here are praying and God is not saying anything? I want you to be real. You are praying and God is zap quiet about your need. I'll raise up my hand because if I have to be the one and only real person in the church, I will. Is anybody praying and you can't hear God answering you? I came to tell you that you can still have that joy inside of you. You can be kind. You can give. Even when you yourself don't have enough. Many people confuse that spiritual prosperity or prosperity is about having a Range Rover. Let me tell you, you can have a Range Rover and a black one for that matter, but have no joy in your heart. You can have the biggest house in Runda, but have no peace in your heart. So one simple question I will ask of you. What proof do you have if you say that you are born again? Is it the suit that you wear? Is it the house that you have? In? Is it the m -Pesa balance on your phone? No. The only proof that you have because the Bible says we shall know them by their fruit is if you possess the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Am I talking to somebody who possesses a fruit up in here? The devil could be roaring around me, but I want you to know the devil is a like, and, and I want you to underline the word like a roaring lion. He's not a lion. He's like a goat with a big voice. The reason that's why I'm preaching this message today is because on Monday, I was so discouraged in my house. I was so down. I wanted to quit. I wanted to run away and go hide in Gong Hills and eat bananas and mangoes. But I started to realize that the devil is the father of lies. The devil will always come to you and show you what you do not have. And then I started playing a little game. He called me something and I called him something. He told me, Pastor Brian, you're a loser. I told him, first of all, you're going to hell. 
First of all, you're the father of lies. You know, there's a time to be petty even as a servant of God. This is warfare, people. When the devil says you're a fool, tell him even you. You're foolish enough not to understand that what you're doing to me has no effect. Can't you smell the coffee, devil? Now, I know the devil is big, mighty, and old, and he's cleverer than me. But I'm not going to let him discourage me without a fight. For I wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness. But the weapons of my warfare are, are mighty. They are mighty in Christ Jesus. That he gave me the power to trample and step over serpents and scorpions. Now, is the devil not a serpent? The devil tells you you have no connections. Look at your family. Ati joba. Jo, we imagine. Unaeza afford the company na itwa joba enterprises. Ati joba. Bure kabisa. But if you're here and you possess the treasure, the spirit of God, you can walk around a 300 member congregation of devil worshippers crying out curses on you. But you will still walk around like the macho man Randy Savage saying, Oh yeah, I'm a child of God. Ooh. Watch me, because I'm on top. You know, sometimes you need to develop the kind of attitude that you will not allow people and haters sent from hell to put you down. Am I talking to some macho man? Oh, brother, up in here! That's why he says, let your light so shine. By the way, let me just commercial break. How many of you remember macho man Randy Savage? How many of you ever watched WWF? You remember a guy called Mick Man? You know, one thing that I really liked about Macho Man eh, is the fact that people always used to ask him questions that aim to discourage him. Oh, this is Mick Man, and you're here at the WWF Intercontinental Match of the Year. We have Macho Man Randy Savage in here. Macho Man, you know, today you're facing the man, Hulk Hogan. What do you think about that? Then he would say, Oh, yeah. I'm the cream of the crop. I can see Hulk Hogan looking for me, but I'm on top. He can't see me because I'm on top. Oh, I'm not down there, Hulk Hogan. I'm here on the Macho Man Randy Savage. But you know, at times, you need to believe in the God who believes in you. If you will not believe in yourself, believe in the God who believes in you. Come on! the devil take you down. That's why you need to go to the devil and tell him, I want you to surround me now. I want you to try all your tricks now. Because even if you put me down, even if you bring chairs and guitars, like the honky tonk man, and beat me on the head, before the referee stamps price on the ground, my hand will be up, because I'm a survivor. Hey! You can take my body, but not the treasure that is inside of me. Am I talking to some macho man up in this church today? Hallelujah. Then it continues to say, you will be perplexed, <laughs> but not in despair. Let me talk a little bit about perplexed. Do you know what the meaning of perplexed is? Let me use a very funny example. The meaning of perplexed is you're sleeping on a very peaceful Friday night. Not let, Friday is kuyahare, watu alalangi. Let me take it to Thursday. Thursday you're sleeping. Happy that it's Friday. Sindio. Tunaenda pare. You're the green kahuna. Alright, kata hiyo. But then there's a flimsy mosquito that is disturbing your sleep. And you hear something like and then it gets louder. It's like they're worshipping Lord, the Lord on your ears. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah. And then you do. And it disappears. It does that around five times. And now you say, okay, mosquito, I have to deal with you if I'm going to afford some decent sleep. And when you wake up, you turn on the lights. One moment you see the mosquito. And you've raised up your hand. But it does three moves for you. And it disappears. That is the state of being perplexed. Silly illustration. But let me tell you what being perplexed is all about. Being perplexed is fighting an enemy that moves as fast as a cheetah. 
Being perplexed is fighting an enemy that you see right now and again you don't see him. Have you ever been discouraged and you don't know what is discouraging you? Have you ever tried to encourage somebody who's down? And when you ask them, why are you crying? They cannot explain, but they're just feeling low. There is an enemy that is round and about them. An enemy that is sharper than them. You try to catch him over here, and he's behind you. You try to get him over here. How many of you have an issue that you do not have an answer for? You do not even know what you're praying about, because you don't know where the problem is. That's why God... And Paul is encouraging us today to encourage us that you might be perplexed at the level of warfare that you are going through, but you will not be in despair. Do you know the, what the word despair means? Despair means losing hope. When you fight an enemy that is cleverer than you, you make this move and he tells you, I know the move that you are going to make next, but I want to tell you, I am there. You see, let me tell you what being perplexed is all about. Praying and God does not answer you. Let's talk about Joseph. Joseph was a man who was given a dream. He trusted the Lord. Things were supposed to flow smoothly after that. Why? Because a prophecy had been given to him in form of a dream. Somebody has laid hands on you. You have hope. You, you, you're seeing an interview. There's a job. There's something good about to happen. But then, pata, warfare starts immediately. You get sick. You get a transfer. Your mother dies. Something happens. Oh, what are you going to do next? He went from the pit into the caravan, into the slave market, into the palace, and then back to the prison. Wasn't he praying? Wasn't he a believer? Wasn't he the loved one of God? I came to tell you, the reason as to why you, God will allow you to be perplexed is because there are some things in your life, some limitations in your life that will not leave you even after hard times of prayer. Because why? They are meant to change you. You're not going to change them, but those limitations will birth a creativity in you that will make you a solution in this world. Let's talk about Daniel, a mighty man of God who prayed three times. He prayed. He knew he was going into the lion's den. This is being perplexed. Oh, he quoted all the scriptures that he could. He said, Lord, I declare right now that as I step into that den, you shall smite all the lions. But as he was going under, he could hear them saying, Kuya. Fresh meat. Kuya. Teremusha yonyama. Teremusha. In fact, he could hear them filing their nails. Eh? Mutu wa mungu. Leo takipata. Have you ever been in a situation where you're crying for help and the problem is just getting worse and worse? You're being perplexed. But you'll not be in despair. Let's talk about Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Crying, saying, Lord. You know why I'm saying these people? It's because I know somebody is crying away their limitation. I can hear somebody telling God, My father, why me? Why me? Why are my hands too short to reach where I want to go? Why am I so irrelevant? People don't love me. Jesus also prayed and said, Take this cup away from me. But guess what? He went to the cross. But let me tell you why the Bible puts a butt on that line. That you will be perplexed, but not in despair. It's because Joseph ended up living in his palace. David ended up resting on a six by six cushion lined up by around four lions. Jesus is now seated at the right hand of God. So God will allow you to go through that pain. God will allow you to go through that discouragement. God will allow you to face that limitation so that he can be glorified. Give God a big hand and tell him, Father, be glorified in my life. It continues to say that you will be persecuted. But that does not mean that I have abandoned you. Hasn't the word of God told you that I will never leave you nor forsake you? Hasn't the word of God told you that I who began a good work in you, I who gave you that idea, I who set you up where you are, will take you until that job is done? He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. That's why it goes on to say, we can be struck down, struck down, but we will never be destroyed. Because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came so that we can have life and life abundantly. Come on! Hey! 
Let me mention word to word eight things that the devil wants to make you do when you face limitations. Number one, the devil wants you to compare yourself. You see, when you're living in a one-bedroomed house, you're always looking for people who are living in a two-bedroomed house. When you're living in a two-bedroomed house, you always admire people who have a three-bedroomed house. But this is what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to compare. But comparison is the number one killer of kingdom uniqueness. The devil wants to discourage you so that he can make you ordinary like everybody else. Tell the devil, I'm not your next m project. Just because everyone is talking about m does not mean that I'm called for m Don't I, I don't want to compare. In the Bible it says, eh, Peter was told by Jesus that when you were young, you did what you used to, to do. You enjoyed life. But now, Peter, I'm calling you into a higher level of ministry. I'm calling you to lead the church. And so I want you to follow me. You know what Peter said that will amaze you? He said, okay, God, thank you. Hallelujah, I worship you, Lord. But what about John? What are you doing with John? And, and Jesus said an answer that I want to share with us today. He told John, Peter, what is it to you if I choose that Peter will live until the day that I come? Of what, but, but you know what the premise is? We, when, everyone is? when we are suffering, we want everyone to suffer. So that we can feel, oh, it's, it's us. Sindio. Mungu, watch out an hour. Walimwe na homa. Jio tuigie kanisa. Kira mutu wa sema, hallelujah, hechia. Kwa nini mimi tu Yesu? Si hata uguse huyo duu yagu, na ya umie, tu umie pamoja. Comparison. You look at people, and you know what the, what the problem is with comparison? Is when you start comparing, you will start feeling low. You'll get discouraged. But the other flip side of comparison is when you see somebody lower than yourself, you start valuing yourself more than them. But Paul did not try to compare himself. Do you see anywhere that he indicated negative things about the false teachers? He did not tackle personalities. He tackled issues. That's maturity. Number two, the devil wants you to be intimidated. Maybe one day, Hope Church will be full of people with cars. From RAV4 to Vista, Mark X to Mercedes, BMW to Range Rover. But what about you when God says that I want you to hold on? I'm coming through for you. You know what? You will be so intimidated, you will move churches. There are people who don't go to churches because everyone there is rich. Am I talking to somebody here? The devil wants you to be intimidated. The devil wants you to be intimidated to feel like you're irrelevant. But what God is saying is, hold on. I have a plan for you. And in due time, I will bring that plan to fulfillment. In Jesus' mighty name. Am I talking to somebody here? The other thing the devil wants you to do, to be isolated. Because you see, when you're intimidated, you isolate yourself. You start isolating yourself. You avoid people. Then, when you see now things are thick, the devil now turns you into a manipulator. You start dressing in a certain way to fit in into a particular class. You start talking in a certain way to prove to people that you're better. But you know, when you have God, when you have joy, you don't need to prove yourself to others. Then, we get to another stage of rationalization. You start saying, God, you know, it's just because you bless that brother. That's why they are blessed. But me, you cast me. So, can you learn and learn? Yeah. Allah. When I've come home, say, "Sinim dosi jo alizaliwa ko dosi." Yeah. So what you're doing in essence when you rationalize is you're saying reasons and you're agreeing with the devil that I will not succeed because other people have been blessed. I will not succeed because. I, have, I was not born in a rich family. I will not succeed because I failed in my school. That is rationalization. Stop rationalizing with your limitations. Accept reality. And rise up from that reality. The last one, or the, the three ones that are remaining, is frustration. You feel you're being left behind. Everyone is passing you. It's like you're on Mombasa Road. You're riding a bike, and your friends are zooming there with Subaru's WRX. Vroom. They've bought a house, room. They've married, room. And you start feeling frustrated. And sometimes he doesn't answer because you're wasting his time. He already told you, I'm coming through for you. What is the problem? 
Be encouraged. Then there's desperation. Don't joke with a desperate person. These are people who are hanging on a thread. Because understand the tactics of the devil. Please, I want you to get ready for us to start praying because I want to deal with discouragement from the root today. Discouragement is like a bed bug. One moment it bites. Then you scratch and it has flown to another place. Then when you are asleep, it comes back again and bites you in the same spot. So today I don't want to spray the room. I want to chop it off from the roots in Jesus' mighty name. Because when you're desperate, you begin to change your values. If you're a girl and you sing, your sisters have now bought vids and they're living in nice flats and you used to value your body, you start trading your body for the sake of money that will get you where you want you to be. This is the place where people lose their values. This is the place where men start to steal. This is the place where people start robbing. This is the place where people can even kill. Then the last stage is resignation. You can even quit that job, walk out of that marriage, tell God enough is enough, I've tried faith, it doesn't work. I've gone to church, Lord, you're not real. I'm out of here. Right now I want us to bow our heads. First of all, I want to talk to that person who is here, who is being crushed. You are being hard pressed on every side, but you are giving in because you do not have the treasure of the kingdom of God.